Uh, just explain to us, uh, for those who've not been paying attention, what's happening in Nagorno-Karabakh and why does it matter so much to, to both countries? So this is a small, very mountainous area which is mostly po populated by ethnic Armenians, but under international law um, is supposedly uh, Azerbaijani. And there have been um, three conflicts, basically. One long one in the early 90s between Armenia and Azerbaijan over Nagorno-Karabakh. One in 2020 that was about six weeks. And then last week, a 24-hour lightning uh, sort of blitzkrieg offensive by the Azerbaijanis on local Armenian defence positions, um, which has resulted in the local Armenian authorities saying, OK, it's untenable for us to continue living here. Um, Azerbaijan basically says that we should be integrated and have no minority rights, have no right political rights, and um, our entire population is going to, to leave. You know, the Armenians are hardwired to fear genocide and ethnic cleansing for good reason. The hostility between these two countries has seen pogroms, it's seen terrible conflict, it's seen appalling atrocities. There is no trust between the Armenians and the Azerbaijanis, and that is why you're now seeing a massive exodus which could result in the absence of Armenians from this part of uh, uh, Azerbaijan, where they have been living since, mm. you know, the fourth century. Uh, and, Michael, what's the wider context to what's going on here? Yeah, the, I mean, the wider context is that Azerbaijan feels uh, emboldened now. They've had a, they're, they're a rich country with oil and gas, uh, relatively rich, 10 million people. I mean, Armenia's 3 million people, and Nagorno-Karabakh is 120,000. Um, so the, uh, uh, the Azerbaijanis decided in 2020 that they're going to try and take back some of this territory. They've blockaded Nagorno-Karabakh since uh, last year. Um, and now they've pushed in and they've got superior technology. They've, they've got from Turkey Bayraktar drones yeah, used with Israeli drones. And in 2020, they destroyed Armenian Russian armour, the T-72 tanks, were no match for Bayraktar drones used in numbers with Israeli drones taking down the air defence ahead of them and so on. So it was actually quite a, a big operation that forced the British and the Americans and a lot of other Western countries to change their defence policies because this was a new sort of warfare. It was a small war in international terms, but it had big implications, and we've seen those implications in uh, Ukraine itself. So, in a way, the, the Azerbaijanis are doing this because they can and because the Russians can't stop it. And, and Russia is losing its grip on these areas, like Georgia next door, uh, over its relationship with Armenia, certainly its, its relationship with Azerbaijan. And b with Turkish support, the Azerbaijanis uh, feel, the Azeris feel, that they actually now can take back this territory, which legally is theirs, but ethnically, of course, is Armenian. Uh, and, Dan, uh, you know, Michael's saying, you know, well, Russia's losing its, its, its ability to intervene here, but, but does Russia actually want to intervene here on behalf of the Armenians? Well, I think that is also the question. You know, they were meant to keep the peace since 2020. You've had this contingent of Russian peacekeepers. Um, they singularly failed to do so. They could have put more pressure on the Azeris to lift this blockade that's been in place for 10 months, and they didn't do that. But in this latest round of fight fighting, you did have six Russian peacekeepers mm. killed. Um, and I think that uh, Russia has been preoccupied with Ukraine um, and they've seen Armenia move further towards the West, look to the West because Armenia thinks the Russians have failed them in Nagorno-Karabakh um, and they don't like that. You know, the Kremlin today said um, we are still allies with Armenia, we are still involved in negotiations with them. So I, I think that our, Russia is worried about losing its power in this region and it, it has always been a region where Russia and Turkey have sort of vied off against mm. one another but it does look as though Russia's essentially kind of slightly wiped its hands of the problem, accepted Azerbaijan's decision-making, um, and, and that Russia, Turkey and Azerbaijan have sort of done what they want against the poor Armenians.